Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Midsummer. It's been about two weeks since I last saw you, and things have moved on apace. We did a bunch of contracts, and we cleared a lot of the silage requirements um, from the various local farms, cutting their grass, baling, delivering to the barn, etc., etc., etc. And we made enough money to buy those two fields that I said we were going to buy. And I've just come out of the solicitors here. And we've just exchanged the contracts and made the payment. And those two fields are ours. Now, one of the other things that has been happening over the last day or two is that it looks like the tourists have arrived. And they are loving our farm food stall which we've got to go and pay a visit to. But first, let's just check, because the wife said something about there is a high demand going on down there. Um, right, wheat is in demand because the price is rising. Um, potatoes is holding a good price. Eggs are holding a very good price. Wow, look at that. So we'll have to uh, get some more eggs down to them. Milk price is going up, obviously, with the uh, all the tourists moving into the local area for the summer. More demand on the shops, and including at the farm food stall, they seem to be loving the fresh from the farm milk um, promotion. Uh, what else can we sell them? some reason compost going up in value hmm. okay but eggs and milk um, are the primary things required down at the fresh food stall and the price of wheat is going up but we've got none of the grains in stock ah this is going to be a tricky one because we have got no grains in stock. There are no harvests um, ready yet. They won't be ready until the autumn. That means we might have to buy in some grain in order to supply the farm food stall. Uh, see what we can do about bringing some up from down south somewhere. Trying to get it at a cheaper price. And we we're able to sell it for up here. Notice that the main store prices are similar to the, the food stall, except for canola. They're paying a lot more for canola for some reason. A little bit more on soybeans, but we can't grow soybeans up here. It's too cold. Sunflowers. We must look into having sunflowers on the farm food stall next year. Corn again. We can't grow up here. It's um, too cold. They're buying it in from somewhere and they're making a killing on it. Potatoes. Uh, we can definitely use more potatoes. We haven't got any in the fields at the moment. Right. Let's just uh, pop down, have a word with the wife. Farm food stall. There's no traffic coming. Time driving through town. Children running around. Luckily, the schools are uh, not out for their summer holidays yet. They'll be, I think it's the end of this week, they release for the summer holidays. At which point we will see a large influx of tourists. Because the families will be coming to pay us a visit. Just uh, jump into the car park here. See the wife at the at the farm food stall. Let's 
chat with you in a sec. Right, that was a quick conversation. Told me what she needs. We've got some eggs, but not many. Have to buy some more chickens, it seems. Need eggs produced a bit faster. Now, we have had a load of chicks hatched. A couple of the hens went broody on us. And they sat on their eggs. They've hatched them through, which is okay, because we needed more chicks anyway. More chickens. Fortunately, most of the chicks turned out to be cockerels. So, we're going to have to put in a second chicken pen and move all of the excess cockerels across into that. Raise them for the meat and sell them as meat birds. Um, we only need to keep one old and one young cockerel. The rest of them can be fattened up for selling. Need to keep all the female chicks because we need a lot more chickens. So I might have end up having to put in two in pens. Got to get some more girls. Said Monday's episode that we'd have to do it. Need to definitely need to get some more girls down. So we're going to need to get the animal trailer out and head up to the animal dealer remember we can't use the Land Rover for that it's not heavy enough we'll have to uh, use the the big tractor on that yeah, without hitting the wall oh I do just to pull out a little space for walking through oh there's space there that's good Place there, yeah, we can get through. Only got 136 liters we've got right now on eggs. We need to get more, so we need more birds. And I need a second chicken pen down to move all the cockerels across to. But I have to get hello there. I'm gonna have to um, get a chicken capable trailer. I don't believe ours is chicken capable. Let's just have a, a quick look at it in the garage. Um, back this way. There it is. Let's have a look. Oh, it can. We can put 90 chickens in it. Oh, that's good. So we can use it for shuttling chickens between two animal pens. That's good. Get another half dozen cows today. Bring them down. Okay, so let me just have a look on the map and show you what I was doing. Um, there it is. Right, so what we've bought, we've added fields 29 and 30 to our holdings. Next field that we go for will be field 31, and we'll go for 24 and get the the other cattle farm, which we'll use for beef. Um, because we've still got loads of capacity up here for dairy, but we, you know, we need a separate beef farm. So, right, what we're going to do. Now, I've had words with the council about this. It's hard to see on the map. But this is where the wooden windmill is that's used by the university to do living history during the summer for the tourists when they do like the uh, 17th century farming set. Now, the previous owner of the field always let them use this strip on the southern edge of the field, which is actually. That's, that's the steep hill there. So what I'm going to do, because this is their um, classroom up here at the caravan. And what they normally do is they normally have um, some like drover tents that they put down for living in. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert that back into accommodation for the um staff and students uh, the staff and um, undergrads 
to live in when they're doing the living history here. They can still put the drover tents up to show a campsite if they want to. But I'm going to allocate more of the field to them. And what I'm going to do, it's hard to see because of the colouring at the moment, but I'm top of the grass bank runs across here. And it runs across there into the side of the river there in field 29. I'm going to expand field 29 to make use of this flat area here. It's not very really big, but I'll make use of it. The gate is there. Um, and I'll just I'll bring the edge of field 29 along the top of the bank. Just make it a more logical shape. That's a temporary expansion. It'll, I mean, well, that expansion's permanent, but that's the temporary expansion for the moment on field 29. Field 30, I'm going to take out this entire hedgerow along here, and I'm going to merge 29 and 30. But I've got the embankment, the top of the embankment runs here. So I'll bring the field boundary up there. And I'll take it across here and I'll leave a strip across the entire bottom field 30 for the university to use. And I'll plow in a couple of strip fields for them one on the hill, one on the flat. Hard words with the council this lane here, we can put in a visitor's car park there. Um, just a gravel car park with a, an access through the hedge to the living history so that the visitors are not coming in at this end of the field and then tramping through because um, at the moment that's what they do because the, that caravan is used as a classroom and we've got a load of scrub trees here that need to come out um, one or two of them are diseased and they need pulled out I've told the council about it and they immediately gave a thumbs up on it and there should be enough space here to put um, a period building that matches the period of the windmill. I've got to hunt round for one um, to, to make a proper classroom for the university. And they'll then be able to do their whole living history thing down here on this southern limit of the field. This road here, um, I, the council's given me permission to smooth it up. It's a bit of a nightmare at the moment. But they say I'm not allowed to buy that land. It has to maintain um, public ownership, it's some sort of covenant on it, and it's linked to the waterway and reservoir. So they've given me permission to smooth the road out, make life easier for the visitors, um, but they won't let me buy it. Um, I asked them if they're going to maintain it after I smooth it out, and they said they'll have to see what the budgets allow. The parish council doesn't have a big budget and the county council is um, just not interested in dirt roads. They don't maintain them. So I have to discuss that all through um, and see what we can do. It might even be possible for the civil engineering um, department at the university to come down and do the maintenance on that road. It'll give them practical field work. Maybe get that organized. We'll have to have to see what we can arrange. Might even include it as part of the terms for giving them the extra land on field 30. That would be a neat maneuver, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we've got 29 and 30. It'll take us this the rest of this year to get 29 and 30 sorted out. Um, I'm not sure if we can get a winter crop in it. Might have time to get it uh, cleaned up and planted before the winter. Otherwise, it'll be a spring crop, which they'll lie fallow um, through until the spring. Um, field 30 is ready to harvest for grass at the moment. So if I get that harvested, see the extent of the cultivated area and redesignate the cultivations. Um, I've also got a trim back some of the trees on the sides of the fields that are not getting removed. I have to do some extra planting up here where it's be, the trees have been 
removed in the past and also look at this corner and maybe turn this into a wildlife habitat because we're removing a lot of wildlife habitat over here um so we probably need to replant on that so there's going to be a lot of um repositioning of stuff in here and redesignation of the ground and at the end of it we should have a much more productive area as well as maintaining our wildlife commitments and assisting the university with their living history thing um, for the summer uh, each year. I mean, the, it, it's the agriculture and archaeology students that run the living history thing. So, you know, they'll be quite happy to have more to work with. Um, so we've got quite a bit of work to get on with that. And first thing I'm going to have to do, yeah, you guessed it, I'm going to have to go and uh, mow that field. But first, I just want to spin around here because I can't remember what our total holdings on different grasses are. Oh, cows, come on. What a mess that you make. Oh, and I better water them as well. I haven't watered them yet this morning. I rushed into town. Get a chance to do it. I'll shut off automatically. Still, still no milk showing, but we do have, um, as I said, we've got uh, about half a dozen of the cows are pregnant at the moment. So we'll be getting some calves later in the year. Let's have a look. Uh, silage, we got just under a quarter million. Grass, an eighth of a million. Hay, about an eighth of a million. So, grass we don't need a huge amount of. We've probably got enough there to last us two years. Straw we're desperate for. Um, hay is probably what I should make when I cut that field up there. So if I cut it and leave it to dry, that'll be the best bet. Right, so let's go get the tractor and the mowers and the tedder. Ah, where is the tedder? That's the big wind rower. There's the tedder, right. And it'll have to be the 7250 because it's the only thing that's heavy enough for the mowers. The other tractors are too light for the mowers. Get the tether on the back first. Back around, spin it round, come in, grab the mowers. Slipped on the brake there. Grass on the ooh, up there. Punch the mowers through the hedge and hit the tree. Need to cut the grass on this lane again. Wow, that's rough all of a sudden. See, we've got a reasonable reserve of silage in there. We need to get uh, more bales in though. Um, a bales in there. Not 
moving cattle so we can leave that gate open at the moment to patch oh actually we should shut that gate because we're going to leave the top gate open what are sugar beets doing actually growing quite happy gate Oh, there it is. Walked straight past it. Need to get up here and get all these hedges and everything trimmed. got a bumpy lane there most of the time it's not a worry it's just when we've got them mowers on it uh... oh close um it's when we got the mowers on that it becomes a little bit of a problem they, they accentuate rocking right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a quick perimeter on this field. Um, I guess we could start it here. Hope we can get that tether past the caravan. Gonna mess up the edge ends, but that's not a problem. E, e. Um, we want widespread on it this time. And widespread on that one. The e. e. Come back to that mower. Grass is pretty dry, so Should convert to hay quite quickly. Shouldn't need more than a few days to dry it out, but tether it just to get the, the head start on it. So I'm not getting too close to the hedge right now, I'll do that on a second pass. This is where I've got to be careful because I don't want to go to, well, actually I do want to go down there because I want to, I want to get all the grass out of this field that I can. Leave that lower strip down near the wall, that way I don't end up with any slippage that pulls vehicles into the wall and gets them stuck. Right, so this area here is where all the scrub trees have got to come out. And because the, um, the Living History guys use horses to uh, do their ploughing and stuff, as well as by hand, then... That slope will not be a problem for them because they'll be doing short rows across the face of it rather than up and down the face of it and need to improve the, the ground around that caravan for them this isn't going to take long to mow I think I'll just mow this straight through so I'll time-lapse time this straight through, I'll just get this all mowed, and it's done and it's out of the way. That hedgerow, that entire hedgerow's got to go, merge the two fields. That's got, 
two fields are going to be merged because it's the only way to make that viable. So I'll see you back in a minute. right there we are that's the bulk of that field now done now we've got to get rid of these scrub trees you might if you saw the video from a few months back in the spring it's dead easy we're using step out of character for a moment we're using the lumberjack mod which gives us a number of things that you don't get in the base game one of them is this ability that see how we get that red line it's actually a red disc but if we get that red line on a tree then we can delete the tree like that and these scrub trees have all got to go now sometimes you can't see how we've got a white line at the moment I don't know if you can see it moving around clearer there if I turn it there you can see it's actually a disc um, sometimes you can't get it by putting it on a visible part of the tree and you've got to get it underground like there and again I don't know if I can get it to show as a disc um, it's not going to but it is actually a disc the same as the green cutting disc that you more used to get it down on the heart of the tree cut away and it deletes the tree put these areas back here to uh, to clean out as well the tree there needs to go that's a scrub tree those hedges will have to go we'll sort them out in a moment because this is the, the, the field boundary is the wall here We're losing a lot of land at the moment because of this area here red line out of there that one this one find the heart of it there that'll do and another one here find it for a second I'll do it. 
Now obviously what I'm doing here in a few seconds is representing what would normally be a day's work per tree, essentially. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tree doctor this one. Cut that off. And somehow we've got to find that branch underground again, wherever it's gone. There we are. That way. Um, what we're doing here is... Oh, hang on. There's another scrub tree there, isn't there? Yes. To go over the wall and get it. Now, actually, I don't want to take all of that tree out. I only want to take part of it out. I want to keep the bit that's on the river side. So, I can't see it because of the leaves. Oh, get a green line there. Put that off. Get another green line. Put that off. Um, add a green line there. Go on. I don't want a red line because a red line will delete the whole tree and I want to keep most of the tree. It's only the bits that are sticking into the field that I want to get rid of. Now that we can get out. Now that we can see that, can we get another green line to trim that back even further? And awesome. And I don't think we can get it there. No, 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 no. Don't delete the tree. I want to keep what's left on this side. Oh, that was cut in green or red. That's going to cut green. Do it. Alright. Um... Get that to go red on that cut branch now. I'm going to do it in green. Sometimes you can delete the part of the tree you don't want with a green cut, but normally it's a red cut. That didn't do it. Cuts off and take it away. Unlike most um, farm sim farms that I play on, we don't actually want the wood for making wood chips to fuel things on this one. There we go. And we made it small enough. Keep the bits out. Um, because we're not using any buildings that use wood chips for fuel, we don't need to save the wood. And we're past the point where we need to be saving it to sell it for the money. Um, right, let's have a look. And do is take off some of these sticking out bits. Like that. Um, can we get the same thing to happen on that one? Lovely if it did. Fair enough. And that one. Yeah. And the last one is this little bit here. It's going to be the pain. I just know this one is going to be an absolute pain. Because I can't find the branch that it's connected to. You have to cut it on the branch. Way down there. So, oh, we got it. Awesome. That's cleaned up that corner of the hedgerow beautifully. Now we've got to get rid of this. This one is probably going to have to go to a harvest. Fine. Put 
the stump. Again, want a red line, not a green line. Red line. Yeah. Didn't it clear it? out the way. There we go. Right, so that's cleared down into this corner a bit better. I'll put a another tree or two in here. You see how the walls come down here and merge. I can put a few more trees in here just to recreate a bit of wildlife habitat down into here, but I wanted that broad section there. This, uh, this piece of wood because we'll put it on the wood trailer keep building up decent bits of wood until we get a full load and then we'll take it down to the sawmills now if I just pop that on there so we can find it um, right so that's that bit cut back have a look anything else down there that needs to go no we can now put the mowers down that strip back it up and turn everything on again got that hedge to get rid of I wasn't sure it was going to stop there <laughs> probably a safer move to come along from this direction and then turn uphill rather than trying to do it on the downhill sweep. See if we can claim anything across the bottom of the hill. Probably can. I'm not sure that's part of a tree, but I think it is. Oh, it's part of a tree that we've cut away. Okay. Now cut under that tree, now that we can see what we're doing. Come around there Neat. and once we get rid of those few trees in that hedgerow and get rid of the hedge units themselves we'll be able to cut that grass that's up there that tethered for turning into hay and once it's all turned into hay we'll get it picked up and then we can replow the fields there's a couple of other things that we need to do um, let's just get this over here. I need to move that log. Um, them up for now now I've got to go and get the um, the international with the front loader and the uh, digger bucket on it 
because what we're going to have to do if I explain it now so that when you see it next time you understand what I've done um, you see how the hill sort of drops towards the wall and then lifts here and then drops into the field I've got to smooth that down a bit so that we get a fairly smooth like there you see how it's a dip rather than a rise this end it's a rise that end it's a dip so I've got to smooth that out so that it's a nice flat slope on this part of the hill all the way up nice and smooth and then looking at it from this direction I've got to sort of like cut down a little bit there and what I take out of there I've got to build up here so that we get terraces coming up there put small fields in for the university gang be able to do their um, living history stuff because even in the Middle Ages and the um, Tudor Ages and so on you would not have put crops into a slope that steep you would have cut terraces into it and used them but little tufts of grass everywhere that I must get cut down as well um, so that'll that'll help them out tremendously I've got to get rid of this hedgerow then we can flatten out this top piece here for them um, and then they can get a a period building in there as a classroom um, got to check with them what period they want and then try to find an old cottage that's dismantleable and movable um, ideally wouldn't to go with this but see what happens um, yeah convert that into accommodation for them I jumped the fence with it. Hey, I did. <laughs> uh oh, I lost it on the turn. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to take it as one piece into the farmyard, then cut it into two to put on the trailer. Oh, I lost it again. Um, yeah, so I'll be doing some work between uh, videos on that field, get it to the stage where we're ready to um replow it and reshape the cultivated area and we can get on with prepping the field i'm hoping we'll be able to get a winter crop in it that's i think put that midway like that um put that in the Into there, the hold. What we're doing with this trailer is we're just, you know, as we get, go along, we're just building up a collection of timber that we can take down to the sawmills when it's full. Um, so straps again. Get them from here, can I? Yes, I can. Perfect. All right. So, oh, rescue the track there. So, short episode today, I hope. Not checked the recording time on it, but hopefully it's a nice short one. And uh, next week is last week before Christmas. So, or oh, real world anyway. Still midsummer here. Um, So, as I drive back to the farm, take this opportunity once again to wish you all the best for the, the holiday season. And thank you for watching. Mind you to give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Uh -oh. To 
subscribe to the channel for the reasons that I stated in the last episode and to leave your comments down below because I always look forward to them Oi! I'm talking here They don't care. I'm going to leave that field for a day or two to dry and then get all that hay lifted and then I'll get on with the other jobs in that field. Meantime, I've got other jobs. Oh, what am I doing? Other jobs to be getting on with off camera. And uh, they'll keep me busy. Until I see you again. It'll be on Monday. Don't forget, it's uh, Ravenport tomorrow. Tomorrow's episode. It's dodgy. <laughs> oh, the tractor's wanting to fall over. Oh, I should have come down there backwards. I'll jump out and go close that gate. Um, I need to do something with this lane. Get it fixed. Um also need to get all the grasses and everything mowed so I can actually see where the lane is. So, from me, the Gazbeard. Here on Gatehead Farm. Where we're slowly getting our land whipped into shape and acquiring extra land. Rah. Um, it's a very big thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.